silenced. Okay. Yes, my voice will not be silenced. I will say, I will thank the Lord.
favor him. The time to favor Zion, that is you and me. The time to favor him has come. Yes, the set time has come. We declare tonight is the set time. So I want us to come to the Lord and place a demand and say, Lord, this is the set time for you to favor us according to your word. This is the set time. So pray and place your demand. What is it that you want the Lord to do for you tonight? Because the set time has
Jehovah Rapha shall manifest like never before. Amen. We take authority over the atmosphere. Yes. And we declare only the will of God, only the counsel of God is allowed to manifest. Amen. Take authority over every spirit that is not of God. Amen. We bring them into captivity. Amen. And we declare, let the presence of God fill this place. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, take absolute control. Amen. And Lord, do what only you can do. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together as you take your hands. Hallelujah. Let's serenity quickly come and welcome us tonight. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 This is Jehovah Rapha, the great finale. Are you happy to be here? Oh! Heading to that cannot be explained. I don't know what God has in store for us tonight, but I'm telling you, be prepared. Amen. I want to welcome us all to the house of our Father. This is Abundant Life Ministries. This is Royal Assembly. We are founded on the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, which says, The Bible comes to steal, the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come so that you may have life and life in abundance. Amen. That was Jesus' words. And we just want to thank you for that. Our vision is to declare the order of God in the lives of his people. And our mission stands on three points, which is to preach and teach the unadulterated word of God, meaning we do not sugarcoat the way it is, is the way it is given, and that is what we stand on, to, pre uh, to preach, to make disciples, play churches, and to be a haven for family. We believe that the whole family should be worshiping the Lord together. We want the grandmother, the grandfather, everybody is welcome in the house of the Lord. We have seven values that we stand on, which are clearly written on our banner. So during the service, please do take time to familiarize yourself. And is there anybody who's visiting us for the first time? I do not see anybody who's here for the first time, so it means we are all royals. Can I just see a wave and a smile? And I just want to welcome our viewers online. Can we please just uh, appreciate our... <laughs> Again, you are welcome to the house of your father, and with that, I would like to call upon... Oh, please, before I... My <laughs> deepest, sincerest apologies, Apostle and Prophetess, you are welcome. <laughs> The atmosphere is electrified, so I understand it completely. I don't want you to, to take this service lightly. God is in our midst. The Holy Spirit is in our midst. You know, if it depended on, on me, I'll just run straight and head over to Apostle to just continue. Hallelujah. But let's observe all protocol. Can we welcome our Father in the Lord? stand on our feet as we welcome Jesus in our wow. midst as well.
worship the Lord. Hallelujah. So they needed to worship the Lord with their substance because that's what the Bible says. And they, by the grace of God, left Egypt with the substance to worship the Lord. I want us to quickly come and testify about what the Lord has done. Yes, please. Let's put our hands together. Good evening, Apostle. Good evening, Prophetess. Good evening, Royals. Good evening. Yes, um, yesterday's service, it was absolutely beyond um okay during the worship 
yeah, during the worship, I could feel, I felt something in my body. It, I don't know how to describe it, but something unusual. And I could tell that there was somebody next to me, or there was just something strong, this strong feeling. And when we prayed for, yo, yo. <laughs> when we were prayed for, it's it's like it brought. I I felt so light, mm -hmm. and there was just it's like there, there was hope. I could see hope, and there was peace. There was just a different environment, mm -hmm. and while I was sitting there, all I could say is, "Lord, thank you," and. When Apostle was praying for us, I stood in for, for my father, my stepdad. And after the prayer, all I could say is, Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. And I believe God is busy with something, That's busy right. doing something. Right. And I just want to thank God for mm -hmm. everything. Amen.
and I took the book to Chumem. So I thought I left it in Chumem. I was looking for this book. When we came to church today, yeah. this book appeared. Oh, wow. This book. It, was, it was almost like God was telling me, I am the God of restoration. Yeah. What you have lost, I will restore. And it is my evidence that the things that you have lost, I will restore things that are dear to you. And I just want to return the glory to the Lord. For you, it might just be a book, but this is, you know, between me and my lover. The, the, the stories between. And this book is so dear to me. So I really just want to thank God that I could find my book and go back to the time that we had and the discussion that we that we had. So I, I really, really return the glory to God who is a God of healing and restoration to If there is no testimony, let's stand on our feet. Oh, Faber wants to testify. <laughs> let's stand on our feet as we worship the Lord. Indeed, we are in the healing and restoration services where the theme is Jehovah Rapha. Anything can happen at any moment. Let us Expectant, hallelujah. Let us be expectant tonight.
worship you in the beauty of your holiness. We acknowledge you as Jehovah Rapha and we appreciate that which you are doing in your midst. You have proven to us that you are not a respecter of men. What you have said you will do, that you will do. The opinion of man does not matter. Yes. And tonight we worship you as the God who is faithful. We worship you as the Lord who is wonderful. We worship you as the Lord whose name is excellent. We worship you as the Lord who is full of mercy. We worship you as the Lord who is full of favor. We honor you and we magnify you because you are a God who never changes. You are the same yesterday, you are the same today, and forever you shall be the same. We bless you, King of glory. We honor you, everlasting Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We worship you. Tonight we pray that you will manifest yourself as you have always been doing in our life and in this arena all to your glory in the mighty name of Jesus we worship you somebody shout aloud amen amen please you may be seated if you can hallelujah glory be to God I welcome you all to this wonderful service. We thank God for what he's busy doing and what he will still do. Hallelujah. For those who are joining us online, you are welcome. God bless you real good. Can we celebrate online families? And all the royal sons and daughters, you are welcome. Hallelujah. And uh, we also appreciate the prophetess. Thank you very much. God bless you. So we thank God for his goodness and we thank God for all the testimonies that are coming in. Uh, you see, when we talk about healing and you study all the healing that happened in the Bible, Healing happens in different dimensions. There are healing that took place instantly. You see the man in the book of, uh, is it John chapter 5, the man by the pool of Bethesda, the Bible says, Jesus said, rise up and pick up your mat and walk. In John chapter 3, we see the man by the beautiful gate where the apostle minister Christ, they say immediately, he rose up. Hallelujah. Now when you see another dimension is healing where Jesus told the man, the blind man, he said, go to the pool, wash. And he went, he obeyed the instruction and healing took place. There are healing that took place when the ten lepers come out. I, I think they will feature in my message today. And they, Jesus said, Go and show yourself as they were going in the course of time, healing took place. But in all different dimensions of healing, the moment the word was spoken, it has been recorded in heaven. So why am I saying this? When you've been prayed for, when prophecy has been released, and you have activated your face, your faith in heaven, it has been recorded. Amen. That healing and restoration has taken place. Some instantly, <laughs> some in the course of time. But I'm happy to announce to you that in this month of the faithfulness of God, before the end of the month, we will experience your testimony shall be great. Amen. Your testimony shall be powerful Amen. in the name of Jesus. So in the last three months, the Lord has been doing things. And uh, tonight, we will continue 
to see what the Lord will do. Can we just take one moment just to thank God for all the breakthroughs, the healing, the testimonies that has come to. Even if you have not seen it yet, in the course of time, it will still manifest. For those that have seen it, begin to thank God. For those who are still waiting for things to happen, begin to appreciate God. Hallelujah. Begin to thank God, give him all the glory, Give him all the honor. Tell him, Lord, I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. Hallelujah. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. I give you all the glory. I give you all the glory. For all the healing. I give you all the glory. Shout it loud, amen. He's a faithful God. God is a faithful God. You see, when the Lord says, go and do this, and we obeyed him, we never knew that this is how it will manifest. But we want to thank God because he's always showing himself strong. And he's even going to show himself tonight. Tomorrow he will still show himself mighty. Next tomorrow he will still show himself mighty. To forever in your life he will continue to show himself mighty. As Jehovah Rapha. Amen. So tonight. We'll continue from where we stopped yesterday. Throughout this program. Uh, God has granted us peace. He has been taking care of us. He has not allowed the enemy to rejoice over our life. And he has proven himself that he is a good God. He has proven himself that he is a mighty God. And I pray that the Lord who says and the Lord who heals you will continue to manifest in your life as Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, sickness, diseases, affliction in whatever form is not good for anyone. That's why the, the apostle said, I wish that you prosper even as your soul prosper. When he said prosper, I want you, it means you prosper also in your health. 
you will prosper and be in good health in your relationship says you will prosper and i pray that you will continue to prosper in the name of jesus you see when sickness come when affliction come when diseases come it limits people it frustrates it paralyzes it will not allow you to do what god wants you to do and that's why the lord promised that i want to heal my children amen, amen. so tonight as we bring to conclusion of jehovah rapha 2023 edition mm. if you pick me up in the spirit it means there's going to be a 2024 edition yes. there will be a 2025 edition yes. and we will continue like that and i know we'll move from glory to glory, glory. hallelujah I see in my spirit as the Lord is showing in the nearest future this healing and restoration service is not going to take place in a hall like this. We are moving from closed door to open door. Well, let me put it rightly. We are moving from closed door to outdoor, to open doors, in the stadium, in the field. And as the Lord revealed, we will be moving from town to town, from nation to nation. Uh, you see, when the Lord speaks, and he shows you the end from the beginning, it is possible that you look at where you are, and you begin to wonder how will this be possible? Yeah. I will look at 2023 and you are talking about stadiums. You are talking about open arena. You are talking about moving around the nations. But I'm telling you, if God is not going to do it, he will not say it. Yeah. And when the fulfillment of this world will come to pass, I pray none of us will be missing. Amen. So all the nations of Namibia, the nations of Africa, the nations of the world, get ready. Amen. Healing and restoration service oh, is coming yeah. to your doors. So for those of you who are watching from Zambia, Angola, and all the part of the world, we are coming very soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God all the glory. So as we bring to the end this edition of Jehovah Rapha 2023, I will be sharing with us the word of God. And uh, at some point, I will lead us into some prayers. And I will also spend time to minister to us. I'm aware that it's Saturday and we will be preparing for service tomorrow. But God will give us the grace to do all he wants us to do. Hallelujah. So I pray that tonight shall be a night of supernatural manifestation of the power of God in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to the word of God tonight. Once again, we're going to read our team scripture, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And uh, the second scripture we will read is in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 10 we read from verse 1 to 5 second samuel chapter 10 second samuel chapter 10 we read from verse 1 to 5 let's start from exodus chapter uh, 15 26. It's, it's a story that you remember the story. Uh -huh. So here the Lord said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandment and keep all his status, I will put none of the diseases on you which are brought unto Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. 
Now let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. Are we there? Amen. The Bible reads, In the course of time, the king of Ammonites died, and his son, Hanon, succeeded him as king. David thought, I will show kindness to Hanon, son of Nash, Nahash, just as his father showed kindness to me. So David sent a delegation to express his sympathy to Hanon concerning his father. When David's men came to the land of the Amorites, the Ammonite commander said to Hanon, their lord, do you think David is honoring your father by sending envoys envoy to you to express sympathy? As if David sent them to you only to explore the city and spy it, spy it out and overthrow it. Verse 4. So Aaron sees David's envoys shave off half of each man's beard cut off their garment at the buttocks and send them away. Verse 5. When David was told about this, he sent messengers to meet the men, for they were greatly humiliated. The king said, Stay at Jericho till your beards have grown, and then in the mighty name of Jesus. King of glory, we know that your word is settled in heaven. And tonight we are ready to receive your word. Speak to us like never before. Holy Spirit, help us to interpret the mind of God into our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we receive the word, let the entrance of your word bring light. Let the entrance of your word bring healing. Let the entrance of your word bring restoration. Let the entrance of your word bring perfection. Do that which you are prepared to do, even from the foundation of the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody shout aloud, Amen. amen. So tonight, as we conclude this program, I'm bringing you a message from the Lord that says, Cooperate with Jehovah Rapha. Yeah. Help me announce to your neighbor, Cooperate with Jehovah Rapha. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you say, Cooperate with me, it means... I'm about to do something. I don't want you to, 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 to put spanner in the wheel. When I say, please cooperate with me in this program, I want you to bring your part so that we don't frustrate the plans I have run in place. So the Lord is saying to you and I, I have announced to you as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals Hallelujah. And I want you to cooperate with me. The scripture we read in Exodus 15 26, when the Lord made that statement, I am the Lord that heals you. I am Jehovah Rapha. There was a preceding statement, and that statement means cooperate with me. What does he say? He said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord and do what is right in his sight, you give ears to his command and keep all his status. I will put none of these diseases on you for I am the Lord that heals you. So what is the Lord saying here? I am able to heal you. I am ready to heal you. I have the power to heal you. No matter the time of sickness, whether physical, whether emotional, whether financial, no matter the time of sickness and disease, He said, hear my voice. Yeah, yeah. Diligently hear my voice. He said, give attention to my command. He said, keep my status. He said, 
saying, obey me. Whatever I ask you to do, do it. He's saying, trust me and do whatever I ask you to do. So tonight, my assignment is simple. Among many other things, my assignment is to let you know the mind of God concerning the plan of healing. It's you can receive your healing. Cooperate with Jehovah Rapha so that he can make your healing evident and your healing can be permanent. Sometimes the instructions the Lord will give does not make sense to you where you are standing. But you need to trust the Lord. You need to do what? Trust, trust him. And you need to cooperate him. You need to know that irrespective of how it sounds, irrespective of how foolish it sounds, God knows what he is doing. Amen. In the previous edition of Jehovah Rapha, we have focused on different types of sickness and the root of disease. And we have seen how God has been faithful and how he has brought about healing in different areas. But tonight, I want to focus on another dimension of sickness that people go through. Many of us are still going through this type of sickness. And God wants to bring healing. Because this type of sickness is limiting us from moving to the next level. This type of sickness is frustrating the plan and the agenda of God of our life. This type of sickness is giving the enemy access into our life. He has something to accuse us about. And tonight, the Lord is saying, cooperate with me. In 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1 to 5, we saw the case of innocent people who we have misjudged misrepresented, misinterpreted, and accused wrongly. Anytime somebody is misunderstood, misrepresented, misjudged, accused wrongly, they feel a kind of pain. Are you with me tonight? These people have good intention in the scripture, but they were humiliated. King David wanted to keep a friendly relationship with the father, the late father of the new king. So he sent his delegation to this new king. So they went with a message of sympathy and goodwill. However, This king called Anon is supported by adversaries who gave him wrong counsel. This commander advised him wrongly. This commander, these advisors and the commanders misunderstood the good intention of these people. And because of that, they mistreated them. What did they do? They went to her and said, listen, king, who told you that David is interested in relationship? How are you sure that he's not coming to spy so that he can take over this land? Hmm. So Anon believed them. And what happened? He cut off the beard of these people. And he cut their clothes on the backside. He made them naked. He exposed their nakedness. Imagine the shame. Imagine the humiliation. You see, the, the, the beard of an Israelite, Israeli man is his pride. The only time they shed this beard is when they are mourning. How much more? He did not even just cut it. Maybe if he has cut it off, people who look at them will think they are mourning. But he cut it halfway. 
And he cut their clothes from the backside. He exposed their nakedness. And on top of that, they were disgraced. And they were sent out. These men went on an assignment by the king. They went in obedience. And look at what they got in return for their obedience. They did not disobey their king. They went with a good heart. And they said, we are going to make sure we comfort this young man that I just love. He lost his father. Hmm. Imagine the pain. I want you to paint the pain and the humiliation. The way they arrested them. The way they treated them. And they threw them out. I believe this man must be so angry. I believe at that moment, in their mind, what they wanted was revenge. They feel so much pain. How can I go with good intention and you treated me this way? If not, that you are in your kingdom, I will have pulled out my sword. I will have destroyed you. But because you are more than us. I can imagine that as they were being chased out, they will have been shouting on their woo, get out, get out. And these men will be crying. The pain in their heart could not be explained. Only someone who has gone through that will be able to say, this is the pain. Imagine Apostle and prophetess sent you to a church to represent them in a conference. And when you get there, they look at you the way you dress. And the pastor or the, the, the leader begin to say, I sense people with evil spirits. All of you dressing in this yellow, the Lord revealed to me, you are carrying evil spirit, demonic spirit. Please chase them out. And the whole church begin to re -ba 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 -ba, And they chase you out as you are walking out. Imagine, I'm just trying to give you an example to know the pain in the heart of this man. I believe tonight many of us can identify with this man. You have good intention towards people, but they misunderstood you. You have good intention, but people mistreat you. You want to give a happy hand, but you were humiliated. I don't know if I'm talking to someone. You, you, you try to help them, but they call you names. They, they, they say, what are you? Why are you trying to help me? I know there are people I have tried in my goodness of heart to help and they are thinking what is in there for you? A pastor. Oh Lord have mercy. This is real life story. The pastor said I won't be around. We were still running parachurch as the apostle and prophetess. Please help us to look after this church. And we will travel with our money to that town to go and look after the church to help them. We will use our money to pay for the hotel. We will lodge in there. We will do everything. When they have challenges, we will even bring out our money. This is not our church. It's the church of a brother that we love. A man of God. But do you know what? The people of the church began to talk. They were just so they started to give us cold shoulder and they began to say, These people want to steal our church. They began to say, Why are they even coming? I remember a time we we were there, we were teaching, putting all the effort. And on a Saturday night, we were there and we drove over 60 kilometers back home. And in the morning, we went back for the service. And we were supposed to do a program. And before we got there, we said, don't wait for them. We will do it ourselves. We were labeled as thieves. And we were treated like that. So you try to help people. But they humiliate you. They call 
mind. In the family, you just want to be nice. But they treat you bad because they say you are showing off. Is it only you who have money? Yeah. And you will try. Ah, you, you try to even give a brother or a sister the same blood. You want to give them money and they throw the money back at you. Who told you I asked for money? And you say, but I am trying to help. I have seen people who deny themselves. They train their brother or sister or family member. They send them to school. At the end of the day, mistreated. When they do something wrong and you try to correct, they say, is it because of what you have done? What about the uncle who defied you when you were young and you cannot say anything? Just because you were trying to be yourself. They said the way you dress is what made them behave the way they behave. And they are still going around as if nothing happened. In the family, the uncle is still carrying up, he's still carrying around himself as if he is a saint. But you knew what he did to you, how he defied you. Many people have been harassed in the office, but you look, the, the, the boss is held in high esteem. If you talk, they will say, Who are you? Do you know this man? He's a man of timber caliber, he's a man of integrity, but you are inside. You try to say the truth but they fire you. You try to say the truth they make you look like the bad one. They lied against you because you are trying to do the right thing. You are there for people but nobody cares for you. Have you been in a place where Everybody will call you, you are always there. But the moment you meet them, they are even laughing at you because they want you to go down. You have a good heart, you will lend money to people, and you will tell these people, I actually don't have money. This money I have is to pay my rent. They will tell you, Don't worry, I will give you back. But when it is time, the money is nowhere to be found. And the landlord is threatening to, treat, to chase you out. Such person has exposed your nakedness. And you feel so bad. And they will not look back to check how you survive. They are gone. At this point, many have been a victim of misrepresentation and they have suffered humiliation. This has broken your spirit. This has caused so much hurt. It takes the grace of God even for us pastor not to be brought down by this. It takes the grace of God. Many pastors are in pain. Many pastors have been ridiculed. We have been called names, thieves, rogues, and every day we have been insulted. But they never care how much we try to help. And when you are treated like this, you are full of anger. Because of what they teach to you. You know what? You have the right to be angry. And I want to tell you. The Lord knows how you feel. Do you know how it feels? When you give your life to someone in a relationship. You give your all. But that person. Rise up. And they treat you bad. And when you try to explain because they have a louder voice than you, they make you look like a bad one. There are wives who have been humiliated by their husbands. There are husbands who have been humiliated by, by wives. 
families have humiliated each other. And we are in pain. And we are hungry. But the Lord knows how you feel. Just like those men, maybe what is on your mind is revenge. Or at least you want justice. You want the truth to be exposed. You want them to pay for what they did to you. And every day you are thinking, when will justice come? When will the light come forth? When will the light expose the work of darkness? And again, you are right. You deserve justice. You know, the most painful thing for those men we read is that the name of that king, Anon, means gracious or favor. So they expect him to live according to his name. So they never expected such men to behave the way he behaved. They never expected him to treat them the way he treated them. Likewise, many of us, those who humiliated us, those who lied against us, are people who are close to us. They are those whom we have trusted so much. They are those whom we have exposed every secret of us to. You never expected that from them. But many of them are moving around today as if nothing has happened. And you are still going around in pain. You are still going around in frustration. All you want is justice. Hmm. You want justice because you believe justice is what will take away the pain. You believe that when these people are exposed, the pain will go away. The sickness will go away. But the question is, how will you get justice? How will this man get justice if justice is what will take away the pain? Many years ago, I was counseling an elderly man. He's a man of God. At that time, he was about 65. I think I was in my late 40s or early 40s, yeah. And uh, he told me a story. This man, when he came for the, the, the counseling, he, that he was with his third wife, the second or third wife. Now, this man, if you go into their house, in their dining room, if you check, there are holes all around the dining room. When they are eating, when he's eating with his wife, and there is an argument over a little thing, he will just take the knife and he will throw it at the wife. So the wife has learned how to be a James Bond. She learned how to dodge. She would, he will just throw it. Boom! The knife will make a hole there. Make a hole here. When they are driving, they change cars maybe every three months. When they are driving, the part where the wife is is always pumped into a pole. When they are driving and he gets angry, he will just drive the car straight into the wall or a pole. Decide just to hang. So the first wife could not take it, leave Jacob. Oh, now this is the third wife. Say, let's go for her. So I when they share the story, everything. So I excuse the wife. Let us talk. Because there is a root somewhere. So when we spoke and I guided this man, what came out was when this man was in standard five. Standard five is grade seven. They use standard in those years. He was a man, he, he was very slow. He was what you call these people, the left, this left, yeah. 
So it's very slow. In those days, the teacher will write on the board. You will write. So after the teacher finished writing, he still tried. And the teacher, you are always slow. When they do anything, he is always slow. So the teacher will pick up on him and he will be angry that the, everybody will laugh at him. So he decided, when I finish high school, I will get a job. I will go to the city, I will get a job. When I get the job, my first salary, I will buy a gun. And I will go back to the village and I'm going to kill the teacher. He graduated. He got the job. And he bought the gun after his first salary. Unfortunately, when he got back to the village, the teacher has passed away. So he carried the pain of the humiliation of those days and he was inflicting it on others. Because he believed justice is what we heal is pain. And that is what many of us believe. So we ask him, how do I get justice so that I can be healed of the pain of this humiliation and pain? How will these people account for what they have done to me? But in verse 5, God has a different story. In verse 5 we read, the king gave an instruction that does not make a sense to those people who wanted justice. In verse 5, the Bible said, when David was told about this, he sent messengers to meet them, for they were greatly humiliated. The king said, stay at Jericho till your beard have grown and then These were men who were furious. They thought when the king heard this story, the king will rise up, take all his army, and he will go there and destroy. But the king said, stay in Jericho. Wait for your beard to grow. Then you come back to me. Somebody say, cooperate with you, Jehovah. them, you have suffered a loss. You are grieving. You need to be healed. But the healing will not come through justice. The healing is about you. David was telling them what happens to them is not going to bring you healing. Even if I kill them, you will still be humiliated. You will still about you, not about them. So when you grieve, when you lose something, you need to grow, go through the healing process. You need to grow through the grieving process. You need to experience the anger. You need to go through the shock. You need to go through the bargaining. You need to go through the depression until you come to a state of acceptance. And David is saying, Go to Jerusalem. Wait there for your healing and your refreshing. Jehovah Rapha is speaking to you today. If this is your case, the story is not about them. It is about you. And he's telling you, wait in Jerusalem. Do what I am asking you to do. I know you want justice. But for now, your healing and restoration is more important to me. I know you want them to pay for the lie they said against you. But for now, your healing.
healing and your restoration is not important to me. Your soul is not important to me because if Jesus come now, where you are busy looking for justice, you will be peace heaven. The Lord is saying, cooperate with me. Leave vengeance to me. I will deal with your enemy in my own way, in my own time. Yes, they laugh at you. When you were at your lowest, they took your story around and you are looking for justice. The Lord is saying, cooperate with me. Leave them alone. I will deal with So why Jericho? Why Jericho? Why did the king tell them Jericho? What does Jericho mean to you and I? If you read Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 34 verse 3, Jericho is called the city of palms. Jericho is a city that is full of palms in contrast to the desert around it. Jericho is a city that tried as a fertile land. It is a place of refreshing. It's called the city of palms because it has a lot of palm trees. And you know when you go to exotic resorts, one of those things by the by the the, 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 the beach is the palm trees where people go to relax. And the Lord is saying, there is a place that Jericho represents that is in my presence. Because in my presence there is fullness of joy. Because he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide by the shadow of the Almighty. You shall say of the Lord, you are my strength and my fortress in you and God. And the Lord said, come to the Jericho of my life. Rest in my person. I will bless you. Jericho represents a place of faith. It represents a place of trust and obedience. This is the place where God spoke to Joshua. And he gave them the land. And he gave them victory. Jericho is a place of total dependence on God. Jericho is the place where we saw first the symbol of the blood of Jesus. When the, the, the prostitute who kept the spies said, when you are coming back for this land, don't forget me. When they were coming, that woman put a red scarlet there. And that red scarlet indicates the blood of Jesus. The same blood that was put on the lamppost, that when danger is coming, destruction is coming, you will be protected. The Lord is saying, cooperate with me. Go to Jericho. Stay in Jericho until your beard is grown. You need time to heal. You have to stay in Jericho. Allow God to heal you. Stop fighting for yourself. Stop biting and losing. Come in the presence of God. Stay in Jericho. Cooperate with God. Cooperate with Jehovah Rapha. And he's waiting for you in Jericho. The reason why you are still in pain after all these years is because you have not gone to Jericho. You have not allowed God to refresh you. You are still stuck in your mind with the vision of vengeance. You still want God to deal with your enemy. You still want God to deal with them. Yes, God knows what they did is wrong. He knows they humiliated you. He knows they caused you pain. He knows that man impregnated that woman and abandoned her. He knows that man, young man, he spent money on that woman and that woman scammed him and went with another. He knows you were here.
humiliated. He knows they lied against you. But the Lord is saying, I'm more interested in your soul. Come to me and I will help you to deal with your pain. Many end the relationship and they jump into another relationship immediately. Because they want the new relationship to prove to the old one. But at the end of the day, things does not work that way. Many get hurt in the church. They didn't go to Jericho. They rush to another church and the cycle continues. Many thought they have dealt with the issues because they found something to keep them busy. But when the season of that thing comes to an end, another thing will trigger it and it comes. You know what? You didn't deal with it. You only kept it in the safe. Pain is like smoke. Pain of the heart is like smoke. That you lock up in a house. No matter how you lock the old house, smoke has a way of escaping. Even if it does not escape, people will perceive the smell. So many thought, uh, right now, because I've got this project, and you see many people like that. When they are hurt, they quickly look for a, 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 an hobby or a hobby. They quickly look for a project and they take their mind away from it and they are the, it can go for 10 years. But one day, the smoke will come out. But the Lord is saying, cooperate with me. Stay in Jericho. You have carried the pain for too long. It's time to come to Jericho. Jehovah Rapha. Is waiting for you. Trust him. Depend on him. And allow him to refresh you. Psalm 147 verse 3 says, He heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. He will only do that not when you are on the streets. He will not do that when you are plotting revenge. He will only do that when you come back to Jericho. David told the man, the man, stay in Jericho. It's the capital city. And wait for your beer to grow. Wait for the restoration to take place. Wait for your confidence to be restored. Wait for your faith to be built up. Don't rush to serve again. Wait. Matthew 11, 28 to 30 say, come on to me. All ye that are weary and body, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. You yes, say, I am gentle. I don't do fire fighting. I am gentle. And he said, You will find rest for your soul. Child of God, you are tired. You are weary. You have been healed of others because it's easy to get healing from those things. But this part we are ending with tonight, the affliction and the pain given to you or imposed on you by people is difficult to get rid of. And the only way is not by fasting. The only way is not by looking for vengeance. The only way is to come to Jericho. Come right now and receive your healing. Drop the mindset of looking for revenge. God will do that for you. If you go down in the scripture at the appointed time, King David rose up and they went to deal with those people. The Lord said in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 24 he said in my time I will do it. Cooperate with Jehovah Rapha and receive
receive your healing. Do I have somebody who say I will cooperate with him? I want you to cry out, oh Lord, I'm ready to cooperate with you. Oh Lord, help me to cooperate. Help me to obey you. Help me to fulfill that which you ask me to do. Help me to focus on your laws. Help me to stay in Jericho so that I can receive my healing. In Luke chapter 17, if you read from verse 13, the Bible says, they lifted up their voices and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When Jesus saw them, he didn't say, like he said to the man by the pool, rise up. He didn't say to the man whose eyes were blessed blind, let your eyes be open or go and wash. He didn't say, like he said to the, to the daughter, of Jairus, Talita Kumi. He didn't say so. He didn't say that like he said to the blind man, Ephata, he didn't say so. Do you know what he said? He said, go and show yourself to the priests. And the men cooperated with him. Are you with me? The men will have said, we ask you, we have seen you and we have heard that you heal people. Now you are telling us, we say have mercy on us and the next thing he said, go and show yourself. I see have the leprosy on me. But no, they cooperated with him. They obeyed him and they didn't ask any question and they were going. And all the way they discovered they were here. The Lord will speak to somebody tonight. He will give certain instruction. And his word is cooperate with Jehovah Rapha. For some of you, he will tell you, go and pray for those who have hurt you. Wish them well. And things will happen just like God did with Job. The Bible says, after Job prayed for his friend, who humiliated him, who did not trust him. Everything was restored. Why am I sharing this? After you leave here, tonight is going to be an, a night of divine encounter where God will visit each and every one and is going to give you divine instructions. Please cooperate with Jehovah Rapha. Even the dead man Lazarus cooperated with Jesus. When Jesus said, Lazarus, Comfort incorporated with all the eyes and the hand and the leg, he came out limping. If he did not cooperate, Jesus would not have said, Lose him and let him go. Tonight, I pray for the grace to cooperate with him in the mighty name of Jesus. From tonight, let your confession align with the healing you are expressing. For some, the Lord will tell you, go and sin no more. Please cooperate with Jehovah Rapha. Obey the Lord and do all he's asking you to do. And for those who have been humiliated, lied against, and you are feeling the pain of what people have done to you, stay in Jerusalem or Jericho or Jehovah.
ask me to do. I will do whatever you ask me. Give me the grace, me the grace to cooperate with you. To in the name of Jesus. Make it your prayer point and talk to God tonight. Father, I pray for the grace to obey. I pray for the grace to walk with you. I pray for the grace to wait on you. I pray for the grace to let go. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Everlasting Father. My Jehovah Rapha. I know you are ready to heal me tonight. Oh Lord. I confess that I've been holding to some stuff. But tonight, by your grace and your mercy, I let go. begin to pray for your enemy. Amen. Pray for those who hurt you. Amen. Pray for those who offend you. Amen. Wish them well Amen. and see what the Lord Amen. will do. Amen. Can I talk to somebody tonight? Where you are going to is more glorious than where they met you and they hurt you. Amen. You heard what I said? Yes. Your tomorrow is more beautiful yes. than the yesterday when the light against you. Yes. Live and let go yes. and receive your healing. Yes. And today, as I pray for you, I know that God is changing your story. Amen. That is over. Amen. Your healing shall be complete. Amen. Your healing shall be perfected Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Before I begin to make all that call, somebody say, Lord, stand. I want you to pray, man of God, so that you can join your faith with my faith. I want to first release this prophetic declaration. So as you are coming, you come with the faith that everything is settled. Hallelujah. So all I'm just doing is I'm coming like you know when you place order with dial a meal mm -hmm. uh, the dispatch rider or the car will bring it to deliver to you. That is what I am tonight. I'm just the dispatch rider. You are going to dial a meal. Mm -hmm. The Lord has released it. So as I pray for you, as I lay hands on you, I'm just releasing to you that which you have placed order for. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Just lift up your hand as I pray for you tonight. Mandeko sikali brakayaba. By the power in the name of Jesus. By the power in the name of Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our Ila. I declare a manifestation of healing upon your body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your amen be louder. Amen. Just as the children of Israel experienced miraculous touch of divine healing in the wilderness, everyone in the wilderness of their life Wilderness of relationship, wilderness of finances, wilderness of the hell. I declare, receive the touch of God. Receive the touch of God. From tonight, experience the suiting balm of God's healing presence in the name of Jesus. 
possible. But with my God, all things are possible. Everything that seems impossible in your body, in your life, in your career, I declare it is hereby made possible. Jehovah Rapha is manifesting. Jehovah Rapha is manifesting in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever healing that you need in every area of your body tonight receive it. Amen. I say receive it. Amen. I say receive it. Amen. I say receive it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said in Psalm 18 43 to 44 Strangers shall hear my voice and with fear trembling they shall get out. Whatever is not of God, whatever stranger that is in your body, hear my voice. I command you, pack your bags, leave the
That is how the nation will clap for you. When you share your testimony, that is how they are going to clap.
our dignity, our confidence, our strength, our status. Because God told us, He is the God of healing and restoration. He is Jehovah Rapha. When He speaks, He means it. And He means what He says. God is not a man that should lie, nor a son of man that should repent. Every word that proceeded out of his mouth is what he means. And this month he told us, I will not break my covenant with you, nor will I alter the words that come from my lips. And we stand on that word that he is a faithful God. Tonight he wanted to heal us. Heal our emotions. Heal the head. Heal the pain. Because he cares for us. And we just want to thank him. And we will forever sing of his goodness with our families. Can we appreciate God? Just be honest. said whenever we cry out to the Lord he sends a man he sends a vessel with a word in his mouth that is a word to deliver us to set us free and to heal us and tonight we believe and I know that the man of God was speaking from the heart of God can we just celebrate your honor? <laughs> for one minute. I think we have come to the end of this service and we give God all the glory. Anyone who missed these two services, we, I don't even know. I don't know where they will start to catch up with us because we are definitely not where we used to be. We are not where we, where we left Wednesday. Ah, no, we are different people. Something happened in us. Something definitely happened in us and we give God all the glory. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. We won't stay long here, but there is something just to, to wash our mouths as we are as we are going. You can take it as takeaway, or we can spend a little bit of time just to fellowship, and, and, and then we will leave this place. I will ask Apostle once again to come and to just uh, thank God for the food for us that we have to eat, and then close off the service. Uh, of the Lord. Can we just again stand on our feet? And we will be back here tomorrow at 10. The Lord has given us the grace. We will be able to come here on time for the service tomorrow. Thank you, Apostle. Amen. All has been done. Let's just share the grace together. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and